Hi all, this is Simona Rich and in this video I'm going to uh, talk about a few unrelated subjects. And firstly, let me read out something for you. Ramakrishna was a homoerotic pedophile. His chief disciple Vivekananda visited brothels in India. Krishnamurti carried on an affair for over 20 years with the wife of a close friend. I don't know if I will pronounce that right. Chogyam Trungpa drank himself into an early grave. One of Adidas' nine wives, quote-unquote wives, is a former Playboy centerfold, Bhagavan Sri Rajneesh Osho, known, known as Osho, uh, sniffed laughing gas to get high. Andrew Cohen, guru and publisher of What is Enlightenment magazine, by his own reported admission, sometimes feels like a god. So this is a quote from a book called Stripping the Gurus, Sex, Violence, Abuse and Enlightenment by Jeffrey D. Falk. And I haven't read the book yet. It's an old book, but I downloaded it. So uh, maybe I will read it soon. But the reason I'm reading this is that I'm not, I don't know if he has all his facts right but um, one has to be careful whom they choose to follow and my advice is not to follow any guru especially those who are self-proclaimed enlightened people uh, they are fake most of them at least like 99 percent would be fake the, if a person would is enlightened he would not brag about it and what i notice about um people who um gurus who say that they are enlightened if you listen to them talk it's all about them so definitely these are just big egos and not enlightened people and I guess another way to tell but that's a little bit difficult for some people is that whether a person speaks from the present moment or from the mind and for example I uh, I'm awakened but I'm not liberated so sometimes I find myself speaking from the mind sometimes I find myself speaking from the present moment um, but people who are totally rooted in the present moment um, their speech is different it's like they are so centered within, they are so sure of themselves, but it's not coming from the ego. There is no pride in that. They're just who they are. They are very still. And then suddenly some profound wisdom comes from that stillness. So that's another way to tell whether a person is liberated or not. So that's one thing that I wanted to discuss in this video. And then uh, another thing that I wanted to share with you was some interesting research that I was doing. Uh, people tend to see um, some situation only from one side and then they uh, believe wholeheartedly in that side without considering the other because they, are, they get so invested in one side that they are even that they are scared to see the other side and the reason that I got out of the trap of the new age and the trap of Christianity is because I wasn't afraid to look at the other side and sometimes uh, when um, people get into these cult-like organizations they are discouraged from looking at the other side and even some punishment is um, they are warned of some punishment like in Christianity you will lose your salvation and so forth so people are just fearful of considering the other side of the situation because they are just scared of losing their salvation or whatnot and talking about this I was recently reading very interesting articles about the rule of Dalai Lamas in Tibet and Dalai Lama is portrayed as an enlightened being in our culture and everyone loves him and I see many people very much in favor of him and I'm not saying he's a bad person because I don't know 
who he is but I was looking at the other side what people who are against Dalai Lama have to say about him like the Chinese and what I found out is that basically there is a, another side of the story and that is that um, Tibet before the invasion of China was a country 95 percent of the population there were slaves of, of the landowners so the landowners the five percent of the population totally owned those slaves and they could do anything with them so owned them totally so they would cut off their hands or legs or or they would blind them they basically would for disobedience they would be heavily punished and some of them were even skinned alive and it's just a horror story and then some people see oh it's the chinese made up the story I had a video of a Pope holding the skull, so this is so related. Buddhism that was changed uh, by the high caste Hindus, for example, is very similar to Catholicism, so we find very similar rites, and that also ties into the Tibetan Buddhism, so that was so interesting. But uh, getting back to the, the topic, um, we see that it's so easy for us to just be exposed to one side of the situation and we think that Dalai Lama rules um, uh, rule should be so peaceful and Tibetans were so happy with the rule but actually when we look at the other side it's a, it's a horror story what that rulership did and we find also in the Bible the explanation that there is a divine rule that uh, kings have the divine right to rule find these quote-unquote enlightened people uh, usurping power uh, using spiritual texts that were altered in order to stay in power and just totally enslaving humanity so the Catholic Church was doing the same and we find even worse situation in Tibet uh, prior to the 1959 so this is again something that you can research and you will probably change the opinion about the rule of Dalai Lamas and I'm not saying everything that such sources I say is true but just check how you feel about it it's very important to uh, find out the other side why China hates Dalai Lama why China is so much against him who was he when he was living in Tibet according to some sources he was using human skulls to drink from because it was just a religious thing to do in Tibet so he wasn't actually um, such a pro-peace person like he's portrayed in the West and I, again I'm not saying that I know for sure these are just the sources that I read this is the information that I read but I'm just saying that it's so easy for um, because people believe automatically that Tibet should be such a spiritual country they already see the ruler as a very spiritual person without considering why uh, many people are against him um, so I really like looking at such um, alternative views the opposite views because then it makes your judgment more balanced rather than just looking at one side of the story